Hey guys, as we start our section on probability, this first lesson is going to kind of just lay some groundwork. It's about set theory. Um, and that sounds like it's something really crazy and intense, but it's really just um, mostly how we can write probability, um, some basic fundamentals of probability. So let's dive in. We got a lot of definitions here, especially as we go through these probability lessons. You've got lots of definitions. So your notes are going to have a little bit more of fill in the blank going on. So your first one here is a set is a collection of distinct objects. So um, anytime you see them talk about, you can look ahead at number one, set A is the set of prime numbers. So it's going to be a collection of distinct objects. Each object in the set is called an element. So each individual thing is an element. As we start talking about um, probability and drawing marbles out of a bag, each marble would be an element. A set is often denoted by writing the elements in braces, which is what we're gonna do in our next few examples. So use set notation to identify the elements in each set described above, and you have three examples here. Let's look at them. Number one, set A is a set of prime numbers less than 10. So remember prime numbers are numbers whose factors are one and itself. And then we're just looking at those that are less than 10. So like two has factor one and two. Three, not four. Five, not six. Seven, eight, not nine. Not 10. So those are only four. Two, three, five, and seven. N of A. So the number of elements that were in A, four. There was four elements, two, three, five, and seven in set A. Set B, the set of even natural numbers less than 10. So evens, natural numbers are what you naturally started talking, uh, started counting with one, two, three, four, five as a child and less than 10. So that would be two, four, six, and eight. So again, we only have four elements um, in our set B, number two, four, six, and eight, four numbers. Set C, the set of natural numbers less than 10 that are multiples of four. So natural numbers less than 10, but are multiples of four. So four and eight. And you only have two numbers in this list. So that's just practicing sets, elements, set notation, um, using the, the braces there. The blank set denoted by you is a set of all elements under consideration. That's going to be your un universal set. Your universal set denoted by capital letter U is going to be all of your elements. For our example, our universal set has been all the natural numbers less than 10. The entire list would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And there are 9 elements in that list. So look back up at our examples if you need to. All of the different scenarios had to do with natural numbers less than 10. A was just prime, B was even, and C was um, multiples of four, but still in the universal set of numbers less than 10. The next blank, a set with no elements is called the empty set. And I wanna make sure that you see this notation, the braces for our element is empty. There's no elements, there's no um, answers that <laughs> fall into that, or it's got the circle with the slash in through it, empty set. All right, let's look at a few more notations and examples. The first one in this box here, the blank is a set of all the elements that are not in that set. This is your complement. Complement. That notation A of C, so if it was, um, like set A, but with the C, so it would be the complement of, of A, or little tilde A or not. A big theme here is not what's not in. Um, so we're gonna use the example, what would be in set complement of A? 
A complement. Um, well, A, our original examples up here at the top is what we're referring to. A was two, three, five, and seven. So what would be the complement of A? Everything that's not in there. One, two, three, four, six, eight, and nine would be the complement of A. So if you wanted to show it in a Venn diagram, and as we're looking at these set notations, it is helpful to look at Venn diagrams to kind of just put a visual to it. So this is going to be, um, this is gonna represent A, um, our set A, and everything that was in there was two, three, five, and seven. And then the outside, you see that U for universal set is everything else, um, had one and four, six, eight, and nine. And we're talking about the complement. So all of this shaded area, all the ones that are being considered that are not in A. So your complement is not, also note that um, the notations there, two different ways to write it. A set is a, next blank, subset. A set is a subset of another set if every element in the first set is also an element of the second. Um, and look at your notation there. You can see it being used there. In our example, C is a subset of B. Why? Well, what was C? C was four and eight, the multiples of four. B was all the even numbers, less than 10. So you can see visually C has four and eight and it's a subset of B. B had four and eight. Um, if we wanted to visualize it, you have C, you had four and eight in the set of B, you also had two, four, six, and eight, and then universal everything else. One, three, five, seven, and nine would be the rest of the universal. So there's a visual for that in Venn diagram form. Subset. You do have practice like this on Delta Math, so I've got two examples here to show you how that's going to work. This is Pulled directly from Delta Math, it says given the universal set U is 1, 5, 9, 11, 12, subset B is 1 and 5. What is the complement of set B in set U? So let's talk, um, let's use complement this notation, B of C, or the complement of B. Um, so if B is 1 and 5, 1 and 5 everything that's left, the complement, the ones that are not in subset B would be nine, 11, and 12. That simple. Number five, universal set four, five, nine, 10, 11, subset B, five, nine, 10, what's the complement of B in set U? I wanna use the other notation where it's got a tilde, a little squiggly, and then B that also represents complement. So if it's got five and nine and 10, then the complement's gonna be four and 11, everything that's not in subset B. Moving right along to the second page of our notes, the intersection. And it's very important that you um, take note of this notation. It's uh, It looks like an N, but it's just a little curve um, there. I'll highlight it here. Um, you're going to see that used interchangeably on Delta Math, and we're going to use it here. The intersection of the two sets is the set of elements that are in both. So actually, let me highlight that too. It's got to be in both. It's what they share. And what they have in common there. All right. So what is in set A intersection B? Well, A back to our original list, was two, three, five, and seven, just showing us the list here. B was two, four, six, eight. So what would be A intersection B? 
What do they share in common? Two. Just two. So let me show you a visual. If you have A and B, A and B share two. So I'm going to put that in my intersection of my Venn diagram. Um, a still had three and five and seven, and B had four, six, and eight. And then you still have in your universe on the outside one and nine. And intersection, we are talking about where they share right in between there. That's going to be our intersection, two and only two. Here's examples from Delta Math given set A and set B. What is the intersection of sets A and B written out in words for and? A and B. So you want to see what they share in common. Let me set up my notation here. My set is going to have a one, two, and eight. Number seven, given set A and set B, what is A intersection B? So um, they will use this um, notation interchangeably, so get comfortable with it. So what do they share in common? You see it? What is it? It's nothing. Nothing. This is empty set. This is straight from Delta Math. So yes, you are going to see some empty set questions. Um, just leave your um, answer box blank and hit submit um, to show an empty set. There is no intersection of set A and B. They don't share anything in common. Last one is union. The union of two sets, note your notation there looks like a U, um, of two sets is going to be all the elements that are in the first set or the second set. So it can be in either. Pretty much it's going to be everything. It doesn't matter if it's in set A or set B. It's going to be everything. So um, going to our examples, um, what is the set of A union B? I'm going to list our numbers here again. <laughs> A was two, three, five, and seven. B, two, B was two, four, six, and eight. So what would be their union? Well, they, two is in either one of them. Three is in either one of them. Four, five, six, seven, eight, all of them. So if you have A and B, your visual, they still share a two. You've got um, three, five, and seven, same picture as above, four, six, and eight, and in our universal one and nine. But this time we're talking about like union, everything they share. So I'm gonna shade everything that they share. So all those elements, in between everything. So here's how it looks on Delta Math. Number eight, given set A and set B, what is A union B? You've got, you want to put them in numerical order, three, four, seven, 10, 11, and 12. They would share all of those together in a union. Number nine is um, the exact same, just worded differently with the words union of the set of A and B. The union would be one, four, five, seven, eight, and 12. All of those elements would be in the union. So set theory, like I said at the beginning, it looks like set theory. That sounds like it's going to be scary. Um, but it's kind of just like the basics, your notations, um, some of our um, definitions, because we're going to be working with intersections and unions as we work through probability. And, of course, writing our answers um, in set notation. Um, so let me know if you have any questions. Work through those examples on Delta Math, and we'll head over and do some more probability here in a minute.